Good day. Welcome to Australians Abroad, the podcast guiding Australian expats and overseas residents through the maze of financing property down under. Whether you're a seasoned real estate investor or just daydreaming of an idyllic sea change, we'll empower you to navigate the complex world of buying, owning and fulfilling tax obligations in Australia, all from afar. We break down the insider tricks, essential insights, and candid advice to maximize your returns with confidence and peace of mind. In today's episode, we'll walk through the step-by-step process of applying for a home loan as an expat. From choosing the right lender to pre-approval tips, we've got you covered. So grab a cuppa, get comfy, and let us help unlock the secrets to owning your slice of the Aussie dream. It's time to start your success story in the Australian property market. G'day and welcome aboard. Before we jump into all the exciting stuff about applying for a mortgage, let's talk about the first step, saving up for a deposit. Trust me, it's essential to have that little bundle of money ready to go as the maximum a bank can lend an expat is 80% of the purchase price. So at a minimum, you would need to save up 20% plus stamp duty. Let's dive into some strategies that can help you save up. First things first, it's important to set clear goals. Figure out how much you need to save and buy when. Having a target in mind will keep you focused and motivated. And speaking of focus, creating and sticking to a budget is key. By tracking your expenses and cutting back on unnecessary stuff, you'll be surprised at how much extra cash you can stash away. Now, here comes the magic trick. Automate your savings. Set up a direct deposit or automatic transfer into a separate savings account every time you get paid. It's like magic. You won't even miss the money. And before you know it, your deposit fund will be growing steadily. But wait, there's more. Consider finding a side hustle. Whether it's freelancing, tutoring, or even walking dogs, a little extra income can go a long way. And if things get tough, don't hesitate to reach out to family or friends. Remember, there's no shame in asking for help when you need it. Lastly, let me drop this takeaway bomb on you. Start saving as early as possible. Compound interest is a beautiful thing. The sooner you start, the more your savings can grow over time. When estimating your goals, be sure to check current interest rates as this will impact the total deposit amount needed. So don't wait around, get that deposit fund going and watch your money multiply. Now that you've got your savings in order, it's time to choose a lender. But how do you decide? Well, There are a few important factors to consider that can help you make the best decision for your situation. The most important factor is a lender that accepts your type of foreign currency income and can assess it in a way that is favourable to you. For example, if you are in a low income tax jurisdiction, then you want to proceed with a lender that understands how to calculate that as it would lead to a much higher borrowing power. Next up, Let's talk about interest rates. This is a crucial aspect to consider because it directly affects the overall cost of your loan. Look for lenders who offer competitive rates that are within your budget. Next up, fees and charges. It's important to read the fine print and understand all the fees and charges associated with the loan. Some lenders may offer lower interest rates but higher fees, so make sure you do the maths and compare the total cost. Loan terms are also important. Consider the duration of the loan and whether it aligns with your financial goals and capabilities. A shorter term may mean higher monthly payments but lower overall interest paid. Another factor to consider is the additional features and benefits offered by the lender. Do they offer flexible repayment options, offset accounts, or the ability to make extra payments? These can make a big difference in your financial journey. And finally, take into account the lender's customer service reputation, especially when it comes to working with expats. Read reviews, ask for recommendations, and find lenders that specialize in expat home loans. Remember, don't hesitate to ask questions. The more informed you are, the better your decision will be. Take your time, compare different lenders, and choose the one that fits your needs and preferences as an expat. 
So, go ahead and do your research. It's your financial future after all, and choosing the right lender can make all the difference. So, you're ready to apply for a loan and you've already picked out a lender. Great! Now it's time to get the ball rolling. The next step is to gather all the essential documents you'll need. This includes things like pay slips, identification, bank statements, and any other paperwork specific to your situation as an expat. Once you have all your documents sorted, it's time to tackle the lender's application form. Be sure to fill it out completely and accurately. Double check your answers to avoid any mistakes. After all, you want to present yourself as a reliable and organized borrower. If you're using a mortgage broker, they will do all this for you. Once you've submitted your application and provided the necessary documents, it's time to play the waiting game. Approval can take some time, so be patient. In the meantime, stay on top of any additional requests or inquiries from the lender. Ensuring you are thorough and organized throughout the application process can make things go much smoother and increase your chances of getting approved. So, take the time to gather all your documents, complete the application accurately. Before you go out there and start your house hunting adventure, let me tell you about the exceptional power of pre-approval. It's like having a secret weapon in your back pocket. Trust me, it can give you a serious edge and some much needed clarity on your budget. So, the first step is to choose a mortgage broker. Be picky, my friend. Look for someone who understands your needs as an expat, offers competitive rates, and has a good reputation. Once you've found your match, it's time to provide them with all your glorious financial information. Don't be shy. Spill the beans and let them see your full financial picture. A great broker will be able to advise you on your lender options with confidence. Then comes the exciting part, applying and waiting for feedback. It's like waiting for your favorite dessert to be served. A little nerve wracking, but totally worth it. Hang in there, my friend, and keep those fingers crossed. Once you get the golden stamp of pre-approval, it's time to celebrate. Well, not literally, but you've officially entered the game. You'll receive a fancy little pre-approval letter that you can proudly flaunt to sellers. It shows them that you mean business, you're serious, and most importantly, that you're not wasting their time. Just keep in mind, pre-approvals usually last 90 days. Lenders may require updated documents from you later due to your overseas status to extend the approval by a further 90 days but it still gives you a head start in the house hunting process. And here's the cherry on top. Pre-approval ensures that you're looking at properties within your budget. No more falling in love with houses that are way out of reach. It's like a personal financial guard making sure you stay on track. So my friends, don't underestimate the power of pre-approval. It can be a game changer in your house hunting journey. So, you're at the finish line of becoming a homeowner. Let's dive into the last few steps to make it official. First up, signing the loan agreement. This is when you and the lender put your names on the dotted lines, making things official. But before you do, take the time to carefully read and understand all the terms and conditions. This document outlines the specifics of your loan, so it's important to be fully informed. Next, it's time to make the down payment. This is a chunk of money you'll need to pay up front, which goes towards the total purchase price of your new home. Remember, if funds are coming from an overseas account, you may need to arrange international money transfers or currency conversions. But wait, there may be some additional costs to consider. Closing costs are expenses that come with finalizing the deal. These can include things like appraisal fees, title insurance, and legal expenses. Be sure to have the necessary funds ready to cover these costs. Once the agreement is signed, the payment is made, and the closing costs are settled, it's time to record the deed. This is the legal document that officially transfers ownership of the property to you. It's like getting the keys to your new kingdom. Remember, throughout this process, it's crucial to have a clear understanding of all the terms and conditions before signing anything. And once it's all said and done, you can proudly call yourself a homeowner. Congratulations! All right, folks, let's dive into some handy tips for all you Australian expats out there. Being an expat can come with its fair share of challenges, so let's navigate through them together. 
First things first, you need to factor in your overseas income. It's crucial to keep track of your earnings from abroad and make sure you report them properly. This will save you any headaches down the line with the tax man. Now, when it comes to your expat status, don't be shy about disclosing it up front. Whether it's for tax purposes or any other legalities, being transparent about your expat status will make things easier for everyone involved. Speaking of paperwork, get ready to provide additional documentation. Since you're living outside of Australia, you might be asked for extra proof of income, residency or other important documents. Stay organised and have them readily available to make life smoother. OK, let's shine the spotlight on a great resource for Australian expats and foreign nationals, Odin Mortgage. If you're in need of mortgage solutions tailored specifically to your situation, these specialised brokers have got your back. They understand the ins and outs of expat life and can offer the expertise you need. Also, remember that foreign nationality can restrict lender options and impact tax obligations in Australia. So it's best to consult tax experts about how your expat status affects your tax situation. So there you have it. Some tips to help all you Australian expats out there. Remember to factor in your overseas income, disclose your expat status, be prepared with additional documentation and consider specialised brokers like Odin Mortgage. Stay savvy and navigate those expat challenges like a boss. We've reached the end of our guide on the home loan application process for Australian expats. Hopefully, this episode has given you a better understanding of what to expect and has boosted your confidence as you start your journey towards owning a home. I know that the whole process can feel overwhelming, but trust me, with the right knowledge and preparation, you'll be closer to living in your dream home in Australia than you realise. It's important to remember that you're not alone in this. There are experts and professionals out there who can assist you in navigating through the application process and help answer any questions you may have. Don't hesitate to seek their guidance and make use of their expertise. They're there to make things easier for you. Before we sign off, we just want to say thank you for tuning in. We appreciate your support and we hope that our guide has provided you with valuable insights. Keep an eye out for our next episode where we'll be diving into more exciting topics and helping you with your house hunting adventures. Until then, happy house hunting!